Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel, and here we are again with Spoilers with Friends. It's me and Anne, and tonight we're going to talk about Haunting of Cell Block 11, which actually um, we liked a great deal, so we'll tell you a bit about what we liked about it, and if there's anything we didn't like about it, we'll mention that too. But also, we are excited to tell you that it was filmed in uh, the old Missouri State Penitentiary, hence the hat. And uh, we just spent uh, overnight there a couple of weeks ago. And we'll be telling you a little about that too. So if you want to spend a night in the Missouri State Penitentiary where this movie was shot, uh, you also have the option of doing that. So welcome back, Anne. And you want to give us some of your basic first impressions of Hell Haunting of Cell Block 11. Well, I first saw it a few years ago. And I, I think the first time I saw it, I had already been in the state pen. I've been in it a few times but not overnight and not not to the level that you see it in the movie uh i like the movie to begin with but then going there and and staying late it certainly made me have a different impression of it um it's low budget but i thought they did a really good job it's actually scary it's not cheese ball it actually has a couple of jokes that are reasonably funny um the actors are good it moves quickly I think it's overall it's a pretty well done horror movie yeah i think they they i don't know what their budget was it probably wasn't very much but um uh, it doesn't look like an amateur production they certainly have no. used somebody's film school abilities uh in terms <laughs> yes, of cinematography well and the camera work and all that kind of stuff and the actors are very good um you know yes. with, with these kind of movies often um you know, people apparently have conscript their best friends and um, <laughs> yeah, their aunt's the cousin's street, brother. <laughs> yeah, can, can you come be in a movie for me? You know, and then these people, I mean, I don't think I have any acting talent, but I might be able to act a bunch of those people. Oh, um, I feel about it too. I, I couldn't like, do worse it, than that. It's like, are they trying to be that wooden and, and <laughs> awful? Um, and I assume they're not trying, that they're really giving it their best. They just have no skills. Um, but no, this movie, everyone's clearly seems to be a professional, great actor. Yes. And um, so you don't really see the seams and like this person is being very wooden and clearly had to go and remember this line a thousand <laughs> times, you know. And no, they seem very natural. They, they work yes. well together. Um, just the whole they movie. They have personality. Together. And they got Dee Wallace in there. I mean, she's in everything, obviously. But um, I mean... You just call her up and say, D, we, we have a horror movie. And she's like, don't tell me more about it. I'll be in it. Or, um, you know, or I don't know. But they clearly afforded her. I'm assuming that she might cost a bit more. I mean, her her, her resume is quite long. Um, and uh, she's been a lot of great stuff over the years. But she isn't an awful lot of these low-budget ones, even if it's only for a scene or two. So maybe it's like her hobby. I don't know. You know, can I be in another, like low budget horror movie for like 30 seconds you know just just side fun. hustle maybe yeah so, you know a hobby it, now it's a hobby yeah okay. extra check every now and then for beekeeping money or whatever yeah yeah you know you go you spend one day because she's only in one scene <laughs> and uh you know and uh, there's a couple others where she's in like maybe two or three scenes um i know there was one that was also set in in an asylum and she plays the nurse that didn't let the killer escape he sets a fire because he's gonna. Uh -huh. he, he assumes that the staff are gonna run out and he'll be able to run out with them. I think that's how it went. And but she doesn't let him go, and so she dies in the fire too. And so she, her ghost shows up a couple of times um, and becomes clear that she's still um, keeping him trapped there. And that's kind of her, I guess, reason for non-existence for the rest of time. Is she's gonna not <laughs> let this this guy escape the asylum no matter what, even though they're both dead. So, I mean, she shows up in these things a lot, and here she is, and um, I think she's great. But everyone else is great, too, so it's a lot sure. of fun. And uh, it's basically about a ghost hunter show. Obviously, there's a lot of those on now. Um, and I read an article a couple of years ago on how having all these ghost hunter shows has changed, like, the whole ghost hunting, like, industry kind of thing. Where oh, they yeah. said, like, before, before these shows got all popular, there was, like, 10 groups across the whole country right and they they would they all knew each other they would help each other out if you needed to borrow somebody's equipment or whatever it was like kind of like a everybody's hobby and everybody was you know happy to help and then somebody got on tv you know and then somebody else yeah. got on tv and then everybody wanted to be on tv so then there's suddenly like 
400 groups across the country and no one's cooperating because they're all competing to get that next you know show on Netflix or Amazon Prime or wherever most these travel channel wherever these mostly end up and so now it's very different where they're mostly it's a lot of competition from hundreds and hundreds of groups of ghost hunters so uh, I bet I I've been going to haunted hotels since the early 90s and I mean, I've always been interested in that kind of stuff, but honestly, I would go to those hotels because they were cheap because nobody wanted to stay in the haunted hotel. But then over the last 30 years, it's become a feature, not a mm -hmm. bug. <laughs> so, you know, places like the Crescent, mm -hmm. when I started staying at the Crescent Hotel, I mean, it was, they were still working on it. <laughs> it was a, it was a beautiful grand old lady, but it hadn't been quite fixed up. But they're really getting there now and it costs a lot more to stay too but but yeah, yeah. sort of staying in the haunted very different too. scene yeah and um actually the we stayed at the clown motel in tonopa um nevada that we, we stayed in both of the like haunted hotels so the first couple of nights we stayed at the mizpah hotel where the lady in red apparently uh walks around a lot we, we, i'm sorry we didn't spot her um and then the next three nights in tonopa we stayed over at the clown motel which um, I did had I was very neutral about clowns before, and now I think they're great. I think I mean, the whole place is nothing but clowns, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, but I know on our last night there, there was a ghost hunting group, and I don't know what the name of their group was, but clearly this is something that goes on fairly regularly. So you know they were as we were going to bed one night, we see them with their little things wandering around the hotel, and in the morning they were like checking out and talking to the owner, and they had their cameras out. I guess they were interviewing him or something. So I mean. I, I'm sure that he's now able to have more business with all these groups that want to stay there. I don't know who's supposed to haunt the clown motel. Uh, I would certainly recommend it for anyone to stay there. I mean, as, I guess if you're not terrified of clowns, because uh, it's just fun. Yeah. It's, it's just there's there's clowns on the there's doors. A lot there's of clown art in the wall rooms. There's like 2,500 clowns in the uh, lobby. You know, he calls it, the guy calls it a clown it's museum, a clown. but it's really like I think everybody who stays there drops off another clown thing. And they just keep it right so there's just this little lobby full of little clown figurines and stuff um so yeah the clown place is fun so um I, yes i've not stayed at the clown motel i've stayed at the stanley mm -hmm. and i haven't stayed at the lent mansion but i've eaten there a bunch of times it's creepy okay uh the one of the weirdest ones i stayed at was uh i think it's called lehman house and it's a mansion in st louis somewhere over by the brewery okay. and uh Civil War era, and that place was kind of creepy. <laughs> so no far, ghosts, I though. I have, so far, I haven't really found a place I found creepy yet, and I'm still waiting. Maybe you know, next time. The um, most fun one was I, I stayed at the Savoy Hotel in Kansas City, mm -hmm. and uh, discovered some people down the hall making a porn. Oh, okay. no ghosts, but that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty seedy. That was back in the days when you stayed in ha haunted places because they were cheap. And okay. I think it was 60 bucks a night. And uh, half of the building was just like falling apart. But uh, <laughs> it was low rent enough to, to be good for making porn, I guess. All right. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't know what you're going to discover, but you might have to pay a little bit more money these days. Yeah. Um, so in this particular movie, we see this ghost hunting group. They... D. Wallace, their boss, is basically telling them she's going to have to pull them off the air if they don't start finding things. Because these yeah. guys don't want to lie. They, If they find a ghost, great. But if they, they stay there all night, nothing happens. That's what they tell their audience, right? But that doesn't make right. you ratings. You know, oh, they stayed in another place and didn't find anything. Um, yeah, everybody else yeah. lies. Yeah, everybody else. Well, you look at those shows. It seems like every single place they go, they find something, right? You're like, really? Oh yeah. I mean, uh, if I'm gonna give the you the world just is just crawling with crawling, ghosts. You're thinking like, even if I give you that ghosts are real and that they could be captured by your cameras and your little Oculus machines or whatever, I don't believe you're gonna find one in every single place you go. You know, I call and yet, those somehow the green they eyes shows. Yeah, those... they film them in the dark to, you know, I guess just yeah, to the green make eyes. everybody if nervous. I see... If I see green eyes, I turn it off. It's just like, oh, come on. It's just guys yeah. scaring each other in the dark. <laughs> yeah. And it's usually white guys. Sometimes there's a yes. woman. Sometimes. <laughs> I I was watching for a while um, some of the uh, like UFO stuff in, and things. And um, I swear, if you're watching the Bigfoot shows or the UFO shows or the ghost hunting shows, it's going to be three white guys. Yeah. With some exceptions, but mostly. 
And it got to the point where I'd turn on a new show, new for me anyway, and here'd be three white guys. And I'd yell out to my husband, who'd be somewhere else in the house, it's three white guys again, you know, because every single time. And I'm like, was it because, um, you know, they have wives to Black people kids don't home, do that stuff. Or, <laughs> yeah. Um, do they, you know, they just have enough disposable income at this point in their lives that so they can now do this as a hobby. Or their wives are holding down the fort at home. I don't know, but it's just like you get these white dudes who just travel around and and supposedly find Bigfoot or the Mothman or whatever Thunderbirds, whatever it is they're looking for this week, right? Um, and they will magically find something unusual enough to they to warrant having a show yeah. about it. Oh yeah, yeah. So you know the I I have watched the shows and and. <sighs> I'm probably jerking a little place where the cat is sitting here like taking a bath and so the whole desk is now <laughs> shaking because you know he's really into it but um that's okay there tommy lee will probably make an appearance uh he, he was in court <laughs> last week so oh hey all right <laughs> i was on a video card and he just walked right across the screen well, Thank what it says the guy who had to say i'm, I'm not a cat Oh my God, that struck fear in the heart of every lawyer in the country, and we all just died laughing. It was like because we we were all doing exactly that, and especially the older or less computer savvy people were having trouble with this video court. And it's just it's not like this where we're relaxed. You're terrified because you know your client's freedom may depend upon your internet service. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. you being able to figure out Zoom or WebEx. So I think though it's the point great. where he feels he has to explain that he's not a cat. <laughs> <laughs> like who well, we're, you we're very fa <laughs> we're very factual. You have to lay your foundation <laughs> that you're not a cat. <laughs> All right. So in the movie, these guys won't lie that if they don't find anything, they don't find anything. And um, so the the movie opens with they're in like an Italian restaurant or something and they're gonna stay there all night because supposedly there's a ghost in the kitchen and a couple of weird things do happen like a couple of pots and pans get thrown around or whatever so they think maybe they'll be able to make a show out of this one but of course then they have to go see their boss and she's like now you got to be better than that because I'll pull you and put something else on TV and then they hear about this place that they're gonna go and it's uh I don't I don't know what clearly they're not calling it the Missouri State Penitentiary. I can't remember if they give it a no, name. No, they called it Freeling State. Freeling State, okay. Yeah, they don't say. Yeah. They may say what state it's in at the very beginning, but not it's not Missouri. It looks like California, so I'm guessing. <laughs> but it's like we've all watched TV enough to know what California looks like, right? Oh, that look that scrub yeah. looks like California. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, but obviously then they use the penitentiary. Um to use to, to shoot the movie, at least the second half of the movie, after they meet their boss and she threatens them, they go to a diner to have a conversation, which, okay, here's one thing. Interesting. I'm, not, I'm not too clear on this part. There's this little sub plot line about how the main two people in the show are married and they can't have children. Yeah. And this, this woman in the diner tells them you can't have children because like there's too many ghosts around you or there's something. There's ghouls like, in you. There's ghouls in you. And it's like, but they never find anything, you know? So where are all these ghouls coming from? And secondly, what, is, what does that even have to do with the rest of the movie, you know? I don't know. She does talk about it later. Yeah, she does, but it's like, did we... It, it never really... She explains, she explains it a little further. She thinks that they've done all this ghost hunting and they never found anything, but maybe the ghouls just all went inside of them. Or something but but that's it there's no more further yeah, it doesn't doesn't really advance the plot but there it is um and so after they're told by the people in the diner that they really shouldn't go to this place um they do go anyway of course and uh it seems legit up front the guys you know shows them around and um and when it's daylight and so they kind of get an idea of where they're going to want to go and then it's dark right and nope hi kitty <laughs> <laughs> Poppy. <laughs> yeah, and uh, things start going badly. Right? They go badly really quickly. I mean, it it moves fast. <laughs> yeah, this is this show doesn't really drag. It, no. It's kind of like the apparition, which we did a couple of years ago. So I'd encourage you to go back. This is our double feature. We did Ninth Gate and the apparition. 
Um, and the apparition I've seen, as I said on that one, and like the 100 worst horror movies of all time list, is like it's, it's not even close to being one of the 100 worst. Um, no, movies. they haven't seen not some even. of the ones we have. <laughs> yeah. Um, and actually, there's some very interesting points in it and some things that we really liked. And one of those was the bad thing starts doing things like right up front. I mean, you're not in the movie like three minutes before the first thing happens. And it's pretty subtle. And the, her little cactus that she buys in the store dies. And But from that moment on, things start escalating. It starts with the cactus and it gets worse and worse. It's like they don't waste time doing a lot of, you know, build up for an hour before anything yeah. happens. And in this movie, it's similar too. They, they get to this place, they get their stuff set up, things start going down. And so, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun, actually. The, it's, um, it moves quick, the actors are great, but the story hangs together. It does. Um, and things and bad guys get punished. I mean, because actually, yes. the um, the guy who who um, hires them to do this, he's hoping they're like exorcists, because he wants all the ghosts gone. Because he made them. He, he made them. Yes, he he tortured the inmates of this place to the point where I guess they can't leave once they die. They're just tortured souls, and I guess he realizes they want to kill him um, and turn him into one of them. I guess. And he wants to avoid that fate, so he wants these guys to come in and just, you know, get rid of all the ghosts. And uh, so to do that, he actually locks them in. They're not supposed to be locked in, but somewhere in the night where they get scared and they go to the door, they can't open it because there's a padlock on the outside. Well, he that's him. He did that. And then in the morning he comes, he's like, oh, would you get rid of them? And then they realize who this dude is. That, that he was the guy who, this whole place of these miserable souls that are trapped here, he's the guy who did that. And so they um, they return the favor, you know? They, they lock him in, which they, is awesome. <laughs> yeah, they put the padlock on, they, they walk him. away. And he's <laughs> he's toast, you know? Yep, they're and like... They, <laughs> yeah, and then they have, they've had this sort of invitation to do a travel show now. If they want to drop the ghost hunting stuff, and so as they walk away, like, yeah, we could do that travel show. How do you want to go to you know, Fiji or Samoa or whatever? Um, so now they're a little flippant at the end because they did one of their guys did die in the movie. Sure. So so the ghost did manage to carry off one of them, and so you think maybe they're a little plain kind of for fun there at the end when their friend bit. Roger is is dead. They kind of um, made sure that Roger was annoying, though. Yeah. And yeah. that everybody else was annoyed by him. <laughs> so that didn't necessarily yeah. break your heart. Yeah, but they did Stop lose their friend. So, um, but yeah, overall, this this really had um, pretty much everything you could ask for, I think. Yeah. And I thought, you know, having been in the building, I thought their camera work was really good. Mm -hmm. They they used the views and the shots and they angled it in directions to make it even creepier than it is. And uh, I, I thought they used that set to its best advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so as I said, we were there uh, maybe three weeks ago now. And um, it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we didn't stay the whole night. You can stay the whole night. And if you're a ghost hunting group, you might want to stay the whole night and continue yeah. um, hunting for ghosts. I know that some of the other groups uh, did think they found something to talk to because I would hear them down the hall saying, well, thank you for agreeing to speak with us. Do you want us to leave or do you want us to stay? We ask you, know, <laughs> you answer yep. more questions? Like, well, clearly they think they're talking to something. Um, so um, definitely if that's something you like to do, you might find someone willing to talk to you if you go to this building. Um, now, you don't you have to stay really, overnight, though. You can really scare yourself if you want to. Mm -hmm. Because I was stunned, especially as a lawyer, <laughs> that they show you like three of the main buildings and then they just turn people loose and there's so a lot of missing walking, you're not with a group you're just walking wherever you want to go within kind of a certain perimeter mm -hmm. and if you want to go down and sit in the the hole in the dark for a couple hours you can yeah we sat on death row for a while just chatted um, but there are a lot of missing handrails and uneven surfaces so yes. um and a lot of stairs a lot of stairs so i think that that your lawyer soul there was probably quailing at the number of ways you could have twisted an ankle or broken your yes. neck. Um, yes. Yeah. But it's very atmospheric. Um, and it, there's some sure. surprising things too. We went through one um, corridor, right? Where all the cells clearly had been painted. Oh, I guess, yeah, those are I guess by the inmates because they're all painted differently with different designs. 
Um, and I, I don't know, they just give them some paint and say, here, I'm user cells. I, you know, I don't know what happened there, but definitely they're interesting to look at. And then one room uh, cell, somebody had dropped off a bunch of flowers. And so there was these flowers on the cut there. And I don't know what that was about, but somebody clearly brought flowers for somebody. Um, and there's all kinds of things you can see. Apparently Sonny Liston was a prisoner there for a while. So you can see Sonny Liston cell. Yeah. Uh, you can go down into the dungeons, basically where they would toss people and just sort of leave them there and or torture them. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of uh, little walkways in that building if you feel like walking across uh, some catwalks uh, in the dark. Um, and, or you could just wander around outside. Yep. Uh, then the place we spent the most time was where they shot the movie. So we kind of went and down most of the corridors in that one. Um, I, I wasn't clear on in all the places they shot the movie, but they may have dressed up a few of the rooms, you know, just for the movie. And so they weren't immediately apparent as where we were. But that's where Death Row was, where we just sort of sat around for a while. Yep. Um, but there's all kinds of weird corridors. And then like one, we didn't even go down for a while because we'd seen a ghost hunting group ahead of us and they were clearly having <laughs> some kind of session. So we didn't want to walk through the middle of that. So we waited and then later we went down there and they had gone. But you kept walking, and then when you turn right, and you turn right again, and this it just oh, yeah. kept going, you know? And it's like, well, this is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, there, there, of course, we all had flashlights. And, yeah, uh, so you can start I would have been around. scared to death. If I hadn't have been with you guys, I probably would have been scared to death. If I just hmm. got down there and had no flashlight, that would freak you out completely. <laughs> pretty dark. It's pretty dark. But uh, when there's people around, and you can hear other gr groups, you know, saying, do you can we answer some questions for you you know <laughs> yeah. it's, it's harder to be scared i would i would kind of like to do it again if i were able to film one of those groups they would allow me to come as like their documentarian for the night that would be fun to, to watch them do their thing right um, now we stayed long enough so that two in the morning they took anybody who wanted to see the um place where they would uh, execute people uh, we're the gas chamber. The gas chamber. Um, so we, it looked like almost everybody went. So we all trooped down there at two, and they showed us the gas chamber and that that building and stuff. And then they said, you know, if you want to leave, you can just go ahead and leave. And um, and unlike in the movie, um, they don't lock you in. So pretty much you're, you know, free to walk out to your car and whatever and come back in, you know, pretty much any time. Um, there is a gift shop to buy things like this hat um, that's open when you get there. Now they don't have it staffed at five in the morning, but at nine in the right. evening when you arrive, there you can go into the gift shop and buy some stuff if you feel like it. Um, and they always have like one of their people there in the area where the gift shop is, and that's where the front doors are. So I guess you know if you say, "Hey, I need to go to my car," then they know that you know they're letting you back in in a couple of minutes. Yeah, uh, there were attendants. Yeah, and there so, was a there was a JC police officer there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and. But for us, though, most of the fun was we watched the movie. I watched it that day again, so that I would kind of recognize some places and try to take pictures in the same areas where they would film the movie. And then the next day, I watched it again, but I just watched the prison part instead of the first half of the movie so that I could be like, okay, yeah, that, I, I did get a picture of that, or we did go down that corridor or whatever. Um, and it, once I did that, where I'd seen the movie like twice in 24 hours and been there almost all night, um, <laughs> It was clear that they really shot most of those scenes in like maybe one corridor or maybe two. Yeah. But they yeah. they really used the, just a couple of corridors to their advantage um, and just kept going back to the same location over and over for their scenes for that, that part of the movie. Um, yeah. so, they did. I mean, and they're scary. You don't have to do anything to them to make them scary. Just turn out the lights. <laughs> it's scary in the daytime. Yeah. I, think I might be scarier in the daytime. I don't know. I, just, I mean, the paint's all peeling and cracking and crumbling off the walls and stuff, yeah. you know. So it's it's an old building <clears throat> and, uh, you know, obviously no longer has any inmates, but did up until, what, 2004 or so? so yes. Uh, the so, first time I was in it was the day after they pulled out all the inmates and moved them to, J to the new JCCC. And I just, I was stunned that they had been keeping people in that <laughs> I mean, it was nasty. And and I spoke with the uh, attorneys and court reporters that had had to go in there. And they said it was terrifying. Mm. 
So yeah, that it looked like that. Pretty much what it looks like right now. It looked like that the day after they took the inmates out. So it pretty run down. Mm. Yes. 18 yeah. layers of peeling paint. It smells better than it did. It's had about 20 years now. To, <laughs> there's some yeah. smells to get out. Yeah. Yeah. That well, I mean, they had mentioned life. that, you know, even in the in the building where they kept the African-American prisoners in the 1800s, that they would uh, have six men to a cell and they just had a bucket. And that, you know, you can imagine the smell in the middle of summer yeah. that the inmates would like break the window to try to get fresh air in. But then the state didn't fix the windows. So in the middle of winter, you also have no window. So, yeah. You know, yeah. it was it was pretty brutal. Yeah. And that was the building that had the dungeon in it. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's another place where people definitely try to do a lot of their ghost communications. Um, I yes. we walked into one of those little dungeon cells, and then I kind of looked down the border at the next one down, and there was a group in there. So I, you know, I didn't go in. I just yeah. Turned I don't around. think the dungeon is as scary as the cells on the top floor of that building. Mm -hmm. The the building with the catwalks, mm -hmm. and I did the catwalks in in uh, 2005, and that was enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I would say definitely check out this movie. I. I can't remember. Well, I think you can just watch it straight off of YouTube, actually. Um, I, think uh, I think I saw it on Tubi. Okay. Yeah, just Tubi. Tubi. Okay. I so did want to mention one one mm -hmm. scene I really liked okay. because I live in Jefferson City, where the Missouri State Penitentiary is. So I was looking, you know, to see if there was anything I recognized, and there's there's one scene that I thought I they did good with their low budget. They're they're coming out of the building. And there's all these emergency vehicles that you can't see. They're off camera, but the sound is really loud. So it sounds like there's all this huge response to them coming out of the, the, the prison. is coming. <laughs> yeah. And then the camera like spins around and it's one Cole County ambulance, a Jefferson City Fire Department uh, truck and a Jefferson City Police Department vehicle <laughs> with their lights on and uh but the way they filmed it, it doesn't look like that's the only three. So they made they made good use of their uh, their budget. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think uh, and horror movies are often beloved, I guess, by some studios because they are low budget generally. Um, if you can get by with you know having a few you know actors who aren't on the A list and a couple of locations that are back lot places, you know, you can use you can shoot a movie pretty cheaply. Um, and and this, I think those but, are some of the scariest movies because it doesn't sure. have a bunch of huge production values and things blowing up and spaceships landing and you know it's it's you have so, to you have to think about how you want to shoot your movie to make it scary right and yeah. without saying hey the CGI people will take care of this later in post production no you need to do something right. <laughs> you know so i mean there were a couple shots here where they they did a pretty good job i thought like when roger who has been possessed he's the one who's going to die in the movie um he eventually decides that he can't take it right? whatever is possessing him wants him to hurt the others he's not going to do that so he's strong enough to wrap a chain around his neck and like jump off one of these missing railing places yeah and um so you know clearly you're not going to have your actor actually jump off with a chain around their neck so that they, did a, they did a pretty good job of, of making it seem like you know he did when, they did when you know you know that because of their budget and everything that that didn't really happen you know um so they they do an effect they make an effective use of what money they had i think they did they did a good job so that's definitely um, on our uh, to be watched again list. How many creepy doll heads would you give it? I'd give it a four. Four creepy doll heads. Okay. Four creepy doll heads. Great. Uh, is there anything else you want to say about our overnight stay? Or I mean, you can also take daylight tours. They have um, tours running during the day that are probably like an hour long or maybe ninety minutes or something. Um, but yeah, the, they yeah the the overnight they thing, have traditional it's just once or twice a month. Yeah, they have more traditional ghost tours where they take you through and tell you stories, and which is really interesting. I mean, like the Sunny Liston story, there, there's lots of interesting stuff. I thought this was really different. I've been on lots of ghost tours from Louisiana to London. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
This is the first one where they basically just said, here you go. <laughs> Here's the you building. Go, yourself. It's dark. Yeah, that, that was careful. something different. It was, it was kind of like Mesa Verde. You know, Mesa Verde <laughs> is dangerous, and that's why you love it. <laughs> Part, partly. And they do make you sign a release, but uh, I don't they think do. they're yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So don't sue us if you step off one of these, you know, third floor, <laughs> you know, part, you know, walkways and there's no railing. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah. You oh, it's ridiculously dangerous. You can kill yourself. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's plenty of stuff to fall off of. If you turn your flashlight off, you're probably history. Um, yeah, it's, it's beautifully dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to post up after I uh, edit this together, I'll put some of our pictures up and uh, and some of the things that we saw while we were there. Um, I definitely uh, wanted to do the shaking the door so that I was trying to get out as if I had been padlocked in, but I was not padlocked <laughs> in. And so it didn't work out very well. But, um, you know, we were having fun. And um, certainly if you go there, I hope that you will also have fun. So any final it's thoughts? Uh, I... One moment I had that I actually got a little scared was when they give you the warning, don't shut any of the doors. Mm. Because these things, you're going to have to find a locksmith at midnight. Good luck. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that that was just scary. It's like, oh, okay, this, this place is real. This place could just shut me in here all night. <laughs> yeah, like, we don't have the keys, so... Right. <laughs> don't shut yourself. Don't do that. In. Don't open the doors. Don't shut the doors. Don't touch the doors. And it's like, okay, don't touch the doors. <laughs> Keep that in mind. <laughs> so don't shut yourself in. Right. But otherwise, you you will have from nine in the evening till five thirty the next morning to wander around the old Missouri State Penitentiary um, to your heart's content. You can bring your ghost hunting equipment, although they also had some yes. stuff that you could borrow. They did. Um, and so if you, you want to go there and do your EVP sessions or do whatever it is that your group does, um, you are welcome to do that for, you know, eight, whatever, eight and a half hours. Um, and, uh, but also then you can see where Missouri used to kill people in the, uh, the gas chamber yeah. there. So yeah, I go sit in the gas chamber and I'd be glad that you can walk out again yeah. and, <laughs> and uh, have a lot of fun. So good trip we will see you again on spoilers with friends next time with me and Anne. and in the meantime uh have a haunting good time i guess and uh, wherever you want to <laughs> stay if it's a haunted hotel or a creepy cemetery uh, enjoy okay so we're on the second floor and um I just heard somebody say thank you for talking to us, so clearly one of the ghost hunting groups believes they have contacted a spirit. Here we are, I'm going across the catwalks and looking in the cells. See, so there's still a couple levels above us. Camera doesn't want to focus. There we go. So we're in the dungeon yes. at the Missouri State Penitentiary. And this is where people would be brought um, and lowered in a basket, apparently, to get down here and then left uh, for who knows how long, weeks or months or years. All right, so Todd got eaten. I don't know where he went. Look, phone booths. Yeah, phone booths, interesting. Yeah, we're in a cell block where the African Americans were kept. Six to a cell, no air conditioning, and uh, currently no husband. So here we are in the lobby, yep. taking a cookie break. Cookies are down there. 
prodigious supply of cookies. That's right. You need you need cookies on the overnight ghost tour. Sugar, wake up. That's right. So yeah. So what has been the uh, creepiest thing so far? Wondering what's in the air. Mm. Asbestos. Asbestos. Mold. Mm. Okay. Substances I can't even think of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah, we're still on our cookie break, but I spotted this cute little guy in the window, so I'm going to take a picture of him. Which is that spider in the window? Yeah, it's, well, it's a little ghost. Yeah, so here we are. So there's my bee. Going out to the yard door. And here's the go out to the civilization door. Yeah, my photographer standing in front of me. Yeah, that's it. So now we're in the big building where much of the movie was filmed. The uh, front door is down that way. One floor lower than that, in that direction. Okay, this was cell block three, I think. A lot of the uh, movie was filmed here, as you can see, the uh, different layers of this building. And then this out here in the front lobby. So this is where the end of the movie takes place. Where the characters go down to the front doors there. 